As I'm recording this, there are just over 2.5 million podcasts. However, out of all those podcasts, only 426,000 are actually active, which simply means they've posted an episode within the last 45 days. So only 17% of the total number of podcasts that have ever existed are currently active. And here's the crazy part to me. After 365 days from now, or let's just say 52 episodes, gauging that's one per week, only 10% of the 17% will remain active. And obviously there's always new podcasts coming on, right? Like it's a common thing. They keep on adding more. That's how the number continues to grow instead of shrink. However, the number of active podcasts isn't really growing very fast. It's staying pretty stable at this point. And here's the thing about that 10% that make it in the year. That includes all the legacy, very established podcasts that have been around for a while. So it's really hard to make it as a creator in the podcasting space. And what I'm going to talk to you about today is five reasons why podcasts fail. My name is Alex Sanfilippo. I'm the founder of Pod Pros, and today I'm going to share these five main points that I've found and discovered with you. And these will be actually in order. So these are the order that I've actually seen them happen, like most aggressive to least aggressive, but these are the top five things I've actually found. And this talk is going to be for both podcast guests and podcast hosts, because here's the thing, as a host, you want to be part of the the ones that make it, right? The 10% that, that makes it year after year. And as a podcast guest, you don't want to spend time going on shows that are gonna be part of the statistic that don't make it, right? Like you, you don't wanna record an episode that never actually ends up going live. So this is really important to make sure that both sides of the mic understand that this is gonna be for everybody. And my goal here is not just to focus on the negative, but I'll share some positive and some, some ways we can actually succeed as podcasters on either side of the mic. So again, what I'm gonna share with you are the five main things in order that I've been able to find along the way with podcasting and what keeps them working in the foreseeable future versus what causes them to go inactive. So jumping right in here, number one, they don't have a compelling why. They don't have a compelling why. This is, again, the number one reason that podcasts fail. And I cover this in detail, actually, in the first quarter Pod Pros event. If you were part of that, you might remember that talk. If you weren't, I encourage you back and listen to the replay of it. You can go to podpros.com slash 159 to dive deep into creating a compelling why for your podcast and how to properly do that. Now, the first reason that people don't have a very compelling why, and this one's okay, is they just want to try something new that's trending. Podcasting is cool, right? Saying you have a podcast is a fun thing. So they're kind of just exploring the idea of maybe being a podcaster. And this is perfectly fine. These are the people that definitely don't make it when you realize how much work podcasting is. Very rare that someone says, ooh, I want to test this out and see how it goes and uh, and then sticks with it. It's very rare. But that's one of the most common reasons that they don't have a good why is because there really isn't one. They're just wanting to test the waters, try something new. The other thing is that they're not niche enough. So if someone's saying, no, I have a good why, like I really want to do this. I know that I'm going to succeed in podcasting. I find that some of those people still aren't, still aren't niche enough. They get in this idea of podcasting and say, you know what? I'm going to do a podcast and be for everybody. And here's the thing that I found to be true, that if something's for everybody, it's actually for nobody because nobody is everybody. And we always have to remember that even with our podcast, we have to find that narrow niche that we can really serve and show up to really add value to. So here's some action steps on this first thing for podcast hosts. First off is to get clear on your why. Sit down, write it down on paper. Get really serious about this. Again, go back to that previous episode I've done on this. Go to podpros.com slash 159 to check that out and make sure that you really have done a good job developing the why. And an action step for guests, do your research. It's really simple to identify a podcast that doesn't have a strong why. And, and here's how you do that. You go to their website. You go to their social media. You listen to some episodes. If you can't figure out why that podcast exists, it, there's probably not a very good reason for it, right? Like you need to be able to identify that. So look at that as a potential red flag. And podcast hosts, here's the thing. If, if guests can't figure out what your podcast is, is like what the why is behind it, then that's a clear indication the listeners probably can as well. All right, so moving on here. This is the second reason why podcasts fail. And this is because hosts have an unrealistic expectation of the money they can make or the influence they can gain as a podcast host. This one's really common and uh, it's something that really just discourages a lot of people because they, I'll go into these points here, but first off, they, they kind of believe that they're going to quit their job within the six months to become a full-time creator. First off, being a full-time creator in any space, whether it be podcasting, YouTube, blogging, social media, anywhere is extremely rare. Almost everybody who makes it in these spaces have some form of product or service to go along with it. They're not just full-time creators. So that's the first thing that I see is a lot of people have this expectation that, ooh, I can make a lot of money in podcasting. It's not always true. And that kind of goes to my next point here. A lot of hosts say, well, I can't find a good sponsor or an advertiser that pays enough. 
it's almost impossible to find. And here's the thing. If you do a really good job niching your podcast down, it might not be possible for you to have enough listenership ever to be able to make money with a sponsor or an advertiser. You're going to need some sort of product or service of your own along the way with it. And the last thing here is that podcasters don't have millions of fans knocking on the door and they don't have podcasters coming up and being like, can you please sign my podcasting mic? Right? Like that just doesn't happen. And I call it the, uh, the Joe Rogan pipe dream. So many of us assume that, Hey, if I do what he does, I'm going to be able to make it big like him. It's just not how it works. You have to remember that guy had a lot of fame before he got into podcasting and he also jumped into it at the right time. There's a lot of factors there, but in the, the day, like these are some of the things that as podcasters, we look at and, and it gives us an unrealistic expectation of what is possible with podcasting. So my action step for podcast hosts is to keep podcasting a hobby as long as you possibly can keep it a hobby, keep it something fun that you just really enjoy and make it about serving other people, not necessarily going for the fame and all those things. If you listen to the last episode I did about why we podcast that, that I've referenced a couple of times at podpros.com slash one five nine. I talk a lot about that. Like it can't be super self-centered. And so for hosts, have fun, be yourself, be humble, just love your listeners, right? Like enjoy building a community. Even if it's really small, have the right mindset, make sure that you just keep this thing a hobby as long as you can. Cause here's the thing, the people that succeed in podcasting are not the ones that are seeking the fame or the money behind it. They're just having a good time and people really grab onto that. And action step for guests now is to watch out for self-serving and big egos. So like when you find somebody that's self-serving as a host, that they're like, I'm in this to like get all the shares I can. How many followers do you have? That's not enough. You can't be on my show. Or they're like, man, I'm going to be the biggest name in podcasting or they act like there's something they're not. And like, Hey, I'm a huge deal. Hope you know that it's okay. Like you're coming to my show. It's huge. Right. And like, not everyone, it's very rare that you find that. But if you find, if you do see that as a guest, that's a red flag because they're not going to last long in podcasting because everything they're acting like will eventually catch up to them because they're not going to ever become that. Uh, for the reason of them acting that way, number one, but also it's just not realistic in podcasting. So keep an eye out for that. Make sure that you're aware of that. All right. So we've covered so far two reasons why podcasts fail. First off, they don't have a compelling why. And next, they have an unrealistic expectation of the money they can make or the influence they can gain. And now the third reason why podcasts fail is they can't keep up with the workload. This is my favorite out of the bunch. And I know that's a weird thing to say, but it's because it's the, actually the easiest to overcome. Like this is very actionable and I'm an actionable person, right? Like I like to, I like to do things. This is something you can do something about. So here's a couple reasons. Like here's a couple ways that people actually get overwhelmed with the workload. One, they're disorganized. So podcast hosts are really disorganized. They're using sticky notes all over their computer, right? They got whiteboards all behind them and they got kind of trying to map everything out. Or my favorite, the good old fashioned memory, right? Up in your head. If you can remember it in your head, you're good to go. Uh, the, if there's something that we can learn from the famous productivity expert, David Allen, he says, your head is for having ideas, not for storing them. And too many of us, we try to store things and that causes stress. Anyway, I digress on that point. Here's, here's the thing. They've also not developed any sort of SOP and you can tell by all like the, the, the scatteredness of all the things, right. That they need to do. And SOP sim simply means standard operating procedures. So basically here is a checklist of all the things I do every time I'm releasing an episode, if I'm recording an episode, what I'm going to tell my guests before we get started, all these things, keeping it organized is such an important thing to do. And this next point I'm going to mention is they haven't delegated any of the work. They haven't hired a VA or a team member to help them out. Now I know some people are like, now hold on, Alex, I don't have the budget for it yet. But here's the thing. It doesn't cost as much as you think. And actually I'm going to, I'm going to push a reference, uh, a different resource to you. If you go to podpros.com slash one, six, eight, a friend of mine did a really great talk on this topic of how to hire VAs. And honestly, it's pretty affordably, like it's pretty affordable. Like it's not going to cost you a whole lot. And the other thing is if you're using Podmatch to, to release, uh, to, to get guests and to book your interviews and stuff like that, you could actually be making more every time you do that than what you would actually pay a VA to work for you. But anyway, I digress on that point. Um, this is one that I'm really passionate about, but here's the thing that hosts can do kind of the action step here is automate, delegate, eliminate everything that you possibly can automate, delegate, eliminate everything that you possibly can look at all the things you're doing and saying, is there any way to automate this? Okay. No. Can I delegate that work to a team member? And my favorite is to eliminate, like, is there any reason I'm doing this? You might be like, man, I'm, I'm, I'm just like hitting my head against the wall, trying to keep up with TikTok, And you've got nobody following you on TikTok or nobody, like nothing's happening there. The best thing you can do is just remove that, eliminate it completely. And that way you can stay focused on what really is serving the listener. Where is your audience at and finding that space? Here's the thing. Again, I'm very passionate about this point. Use tools. 
I mean, automate things. A perfect example, podcastsop.com. It's a service that, that I create, and it's really great for keeping things organized, right? You can have your, your checklist there. Use a scheduling app like Calendly so you don't have to play calendar battleship with people, figuring out when something's going to work, right? Hire a VA that can do some of your editing. Use a tool like Riverside to get higher quality recordings. That way you don't have any work to do afterwards. Here's the thing. If you can stay consistent with podcasting and focus on continuous improvement while removing friction, that is what causes people to succeed in podcasting long term. Little hack for you there. All right. Action step for guests. Watch out for disorganization. Watch for disorganization. If you're supposed to be doing a pre-interview call and the host doesn't show up or they're late to something, right? Or they keep on forgetting to tell you things like, oh, yeah. Oh, oh, and this. Oh, and that. Right. And like that keeps on coming up that's a red flag and also one more is when they email you 10 times because they keep on forgetting different things that they need from you all those things are red flags and here's the thing if they're that disorganized and be really stressed out they might not make it long term so something to keep in mind there all right so here we go now um that was the most practical everything i'm going to share here one that i'm obviously passionate about because it's very easy to fix that problem but a lot of people stop podcasting because of it so moving on to the fourth point this is the fourth reason podcasters fail it's because they give up too soon when they don't see results and this is the saddest one to me. And this is actually due to two main things that we all are familiar with low downloads. And the next one is not having an engaged audience. So low interaction from listeners, these two things really result to us saying, you know what, I'm done. I'm going to give up on this thing. And I want to quickly share a story. This actually comes from Napoleon Hill's book, think and grow rich. Some of you might be familiar with it, but there was a young guy who moved from his country to California during the gold rush. And he decided, you know what, I'm going to get rich. He bought some land, bought all the gear and just started going away, right? You know, he's using a pick and he was just going through digging, 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 looking weeks went by months went by a year goes by nothing. And this young guy was just like burnt out. He was done. He's like, you know what? I am done with this. He sold everything, all the gear, all the land for pennies on the dollar and moved back to his country. The person who bought it from him picked up that pick and went straight back to the place where that, that guy who was super ambitious, where, right where he left off and started digging. He started digging a couple minutes go by. He digs a couple feet. He gets three feet and strikes the biggest amount of gold that had ever been found during the California gold rush. And here's the thing. Are we giving up when we're three feet from gold? Are we giving up just a little bit too soon? Like we're right on the cusp of a breakthrough, but we decide to give up. I have found this to be true for so many of us in podcasting. Like we're on the cusp of something really great. That's really impactful for people, but we just aren't seeing the results. There's no downloads. There's no interaction. I'm out. I'm done. And I remember for me with my show, I hit a point that really felt like that, where I was just like, I'm not seeing enough. But instead of giving up, when my downloads were just leveled out, nothing was happening, even shrinking a little bit. I just decided, you know what? I'm going to keep on being consistent. Every single week, I'm going to release an episode no matter what. And I did that. And over time, without changing much, obviously, I got better at interviews and things like that, right? But the show really started to take off and growing. It's because I stayed consistent with it. And so I always want to encourage people, if you feel like you're giving up or you need to give up because you're just not seeing the traction, hold on. If you believe in it, you can keep it fun. You can keep it a hobby. You can end up really succeeding in podcasting. So an action step for hosts with what I basically just shared there is to be optimistic, like remain optimistic, keep on going, be exciting about the future that you can't see, even if it's just a potential future. Remember that you're impacting lives and helping somebody. Even if you have a comedy podcast, you're making somebody laugh. That's a good thing. It's worthwhile to keep on going if you really believe in it. And then the action step for guests is listen, for, listen to the host's speech. Do they sound like they're burnt out? Do they sound like they're defeated? Do they sound like they're getting ready to stop? Like, or they're like, ooh, it was kind of depressing, right? Like when you're hearing that, that should be a red flag as to saying that, that maybe I don't need to be on this show because it, they might not be there. Now, granted, listen, if you are an encouraging person, jump on that show, speak some life and help them continue to go. Don't let that be the reason that stops you, but be mindful of these things. All right. There's something I like to say about podcasting when I, when I show this point. Podcasting is like taking the stairs, not the elevator. Podcasting is like taking the stairs, not the elevator. It's not going to fast track you to success. It's like taking the stairs. Slow and steady wins the race. And this is true on either side of the mic. If you're a guest, it's the same. You got to just keep on guesting, keep on going. Eventually it's going to pay off, but it's like taking the stairs, not the elevator. All right. So, so far we've talked about these reasons that podcasts fail. Number one, they don't have a compelling why. Number two, they have an unrealistic expectation of the money they can get or the influence they can gain. Number three, they get overwhelmed with the workload. Number four, they give up too soon when they don't see results. And now for the fifth and final reason, they go the path alone. They go the path alone. Being a creator in any space is a lonely road. You need a tribe if you want to succeed. And I love what Helen Keller says. She says that alone we can do so little, but together we can do so much. 
And I think it's so important that all of us understand that. And what I find that, that causes this is podcasters don't generally find a community. They don't seek out a community. They're busy. They're living in their own little bubble, their own little world. The next thing is they don't collaborate with other podcasters. So they just decide, you know what, like, this is my show. It's what I'm doing. I'm just going to do me and keep on going. Right. But they're not collaborating with anybody or talking to others in the industry. And the last thing is I find this not to be true as often, but this is a major red flag. They're rude to anyone who reaches out to them in the space. And I've had hundreds of people send really mean emails to me, like really mean, like service providers and podcasters. I'm really just trying to be nice to, um, I'm not trying to be rude or mean, but like they immediately go back to like cussing me out. And, but here's the thing, like I'm, I'm a follower of Jesus. I'm not trying to push my faith on anybody. If there's one thing I've always found to be true for me and, and that I just know is that hurting people hurt people, hurting people hurt people. And for me, my job is just to love them regardless. And sometimes it means backing off, just being like, you know, I can't even respond to this email. I'm just going to let it go. That's fine. But other times it's like, Hey, can I respond in a loving way that maybe I can help them get through the hurt that they're, that they're suffering with. Right. But at the end of the day, my, my point of this is when people are rude and mean, when someone reached out in this space, even to collaborate or just to be nice you have to look out for that. And if that's you, that you kind of have like some of that bitterness, you want to change your heart because you're not going to be able to succeed in any space being like that. So my action step for podcast hosts are to join a podcasting community. Now, if you're actually watching this live as we're sharing it, you're already in the pod pros community, which is a great place to be. I'm a little bit biased, of course, right? It's my community, but I'm a little biased. Um, but find a community that works well for you. Collaborate, network with other podcasters in your space. And here's the thing. I've always found that a rising tide lifts all ships. Let's all get better together. Let's, let's find that common goal of sharing great content with the world. So podcast hosts, get into some form of community, wherever that might be. Don't just let it be mine because I'm talking right now. Find the one that's right for you where you can really thrive and grow with some other people. And action step for guests, consider a green light when a host introduces you to another or anything like this. So like if a host introduces you to someone, another host, oh, you should also be on this show. Thanks for coming to mind. Check out this show. That's a, that's a good sign that, you know what, they're in some sort of community. You also look at their social media, see if they've ever referenced any other podcasts, if they've ever done any collaborations. When you see that, that means that, you know what, they're actually in a community. They're probably not rude and mean to other podcasters, right? Like they're in it together. That can help them succeed long-term. All right. So to recap on the positive side of things, this is what podcasters can do to succeed. I'm going to mention these five things again, that go right along with the points of how they fail, right? Uh, first off, Spend time making your why compelling and convicting for both you and for your listeners. Number two, remember, it's not about the money or the fame. It's about the service that you provide the world in the most enjoyable way that you can. Number three, use tools, team members to simplify the production process of your podcast. So again, you can just get the content out there to people. Number four, don't give up. Stay the course. Press on when you feel like stopping. Let your why drive you through this. And number five, don't go the path alone. Please do not go the path alone. Connect with other like-minded creators. A rising tide, again, lifts all ships. So I hope that you found this really helpful. And I want to say thank you so much to all of you for spending this time with me today. I really appreciate you.